Louder with Crowder Studios, protected exclusively by Walther. And Hopper. Since our last live stream, questions were left unanswered. Did Elizabeth Warren scalp Kamala Harris in the polls? Is Joe Biden still alive? Will Bernie comb his hair? Who are those other people? For these answers and more, tune in September 12th as we live stream the ABC News Univision Democratic Debate. It's going to be the first live stream in the new studio with your favorite guests, the Lotto of Credit drinking game, and a few surprises. September 12th, DNC Debate. Be there. show starts in two hours. I fucking know that. Don't you think I know that? I'm just, what are we gonna do? All right, everyone split up, go get help. What, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna wait while you go get help. Go, 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 now! That's called the, uh, I'm out of touch with African American culture because I don't know why all the hip hop artists do this now. The hand, the, and like the lips. Quarter Black Garrett is here with me. Do you hey, know what that is? Why they nope. all do this? Like the no NBA idea. players and the rappers. Show me your hood pass, Quarter Black Garrett. What's up? I got my chicken. Half Asian lawyer Bill Richmond is here. How are you, sir? That's wonderful. We have audio, Wade. Uh, also, by the way, question of the day. We have John O'Hurley on the show. Jay Peterman from Seinfeld. Yeah, yeah. Who's going to be talking about some recent controversies with Deborah Messing, Will and Grace. And uh, apparently he's a conservative. Supposedly. Question of the day, though. Well, have you uh, heard any actual prominent comedians or up-and-coming comedians criticizing Dave Chappelle's new Netflix special? Did you watch it? What do you think about it? We're going to be talking about that quite a bit. And Gerald B., what's the one of the day, sir? Oh, look who's back! Oh, After the back oh, surgery, all right, silly baby. on pain pills. Freaking thing's not going to take Our my job. very own Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> he was better than me last time. What do you want? What do they have you on right now? Uh, hydrocodone and Flexeril. Wow, sounds dangerous. I'm going to say a lot of fun <laughs> stuff What's the today? line of the day? <laughs> Revelry by Horse Heaven Hills. Wash Bullock. down those muscle yes. relaxers. Oh, oh and, yeah, baby. Uh, yeah, that's a good, that's a good recipe. <laughs> so, yeah, did everyone here, everyone saw, except for half Asian yes. lawyer Bill Richards. Correct. He didn't even know it was a thing. all saw the yeah. Dave Chappelle special. Yeah. Because yes. my lawyer can't be bothered no. to do his homework. For he comedy. Has, he has billable hours to get to. Things really to looking forward to John O'Hurley being on the show as well. Yeah. Uh, chicken are you, doing, you, you feeling well though? I'm feeling pretty good. Good. Uh, you don't look great. You should be. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Bill. Uh, I love no, you look you the too. same, but just just don't look. Just, just don't atrophied. Look great. Yeah, oh, never mind. Uh, leading the news. <laughs> oh, I'm feeling a little better. Viewers uh, uh, were shocked Wednesday night when Joe Biden's eye filled with blood during CNN's no, climate change. Oh gosh. Uh, yeah. there, I don't know if we can. That's, it's covered there by the. A, we have another picture. There. That's a rough. One. So this comes from Washington Examiner from the uh, Climate Town Hall. The former vice president's left eye appeared to have a blood vessel 
burst while he was participating in CNN's town hall on climate change. Uh, some were concerned that it was another aneurysm I think he had a while yeah. back. Yeah. Some dismissed it as just you know high allergy season, though many pointed uh, to an ill-timed green room prank from Bernie Sanders, which seems as though... Oh, my mm. gosh. <laughs> he got all of that one! <laughs> That seems like something. He that would that do. seems a little hard. Yeah. Joe, he just needs a break, man. He's an old guy. He's got blood vessels bursting while he's in a. Did you say butt show? vessels? <laughs> blood <laughs> vessels. He does. Who knows? That's a hemorrhoid, bro. That's what I called it. Blood vessels. <laughs> Speaking of Bernie he just Sanders, needs a break. Uh, he did declare that if he was elected president, he will eliminate medical debt. Throughout the country, oh, comes that's from good. CNS yeah. News. Of course, Sanders did not give any further details uh, of his anticipated legislation, of course not. including though how he plans for the canceled all. Medical debt. It's about medical damn time. <laughs> I love the little uh, <laughs> Lord Fauntleroy haircut. <laughs> that was nice. Yes. So gross. In case you wondered that we were running this on a shoestring <laughs> budget. <laughs> yep. <laughs> You're correct. The yeah. amount of energy. We literally couldn't hire another actor. Uh, <laughs> or a replacement <laughs> for me last week, apparently. guy in a blonde wig. Uh, so, oh. hold on. So I want to make sure I understand this yes. plan correctly. If, mm -hmm. if Bernie Sanders, oh. if he just cancels the debt... Wait, so Bill, how would how would this work? How, can we do that? Yeah, sure, we can do that. But how? How can we do the what if we Yeah, I'm not how do we how would we go about doing it? Oh, you just do it with subsidies. Oh really? Yeah. So if we use subsidies. Just like the taxpayer, you mean? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Correct. Uh, yes, that's right. Turning to entertainment. <laughs> wow. Uh -oh. After being delayed for over a year, Woody Allen's latest film will finally be released. Oh, so, well, that's good. Finally, okay. uh, a win for Hollywood Jews. <laughs> what? What? What is? What's, what is he doing? Oh, I don't, wow. We don't want you to be oh, here. No. no. I don't know. Oh, boy. No. Wow. No. 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 That's oh my gosh. That's wow. enough. That's messed up. I don't know why we still allow him in the studio. No. <laughs> uh, switching back to politics. No. Why does he, you know, it requires a key card to enter. Yeah. Why did we give him one? It. I don't no. know how he gets it. Oh, man. <sighs> Somebody on the inside. It's because he sells Gerald Percocet. Switching back to politics, <laughs> uh, the mayor of Chicago <laughs> told Senator Ted Cruz to, uh, quote, keep your name out of your mouth. Keep our name out of your mouth, sorry, I should say. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This came after the Oops. senator used gun violence in Chicago as an example of how gun reform laws may not work. Mm -hmm. Keep our name out of your mm -hmm. mouth. Uh, kept out of the mayor's mouth, uh, even more so, were the names of everyone shot in Chicago over the month of August. So... <laughs> Wow, that uh, oh, that almost looks bad when I'm dead. No, I'm not. When I'm, it's the song is catch. Yes, <laughs> yeah, it's a good song. It's, it's a great song. It's a good song. Dad, and Chicago is the best example of gun control and how it works. So we have to be able to talk about it. Yeah, come on. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Effective. We'll edit that in post. This is it's a, it's a catchy song. <laughs> yeah, and it's you one of the few down. songs that's catchy that's royalty free, so we can use it ah. without the brave and beautiful lisp big yeah. gay Mexicans at Fox coming after us. Uh, I don't think he's beautiful, beautiful and brave. Here's a happy story. Beautiful and brave. He's still you once. Beautiful and brave, always beautiful and brave. Yes. <laughs> but I think he's fired. A team do do? <laughs> from River Ridge, Louisiana, became the first uh, from the state to win the Little League World Series. Aww, and it worked. Their fathers finally loved them. Good for them. Yay. <laughs> So Calvin Klein now is, uh, by the way, using plus-size models to reinvent it. We're going to talk about Dave Chappelle in a little bit. I want to oh hear your comments. Gosh. Reinvent its Stick brand. I know. I'm so excited. I've been invited. This comes from the New York Post. Uh, the company oh. wants to be more inclusive, Calvin Klein, and is embracing a new trend of body positivity. Oh, that's good. It's about damn time. Insulin. Calvin Klein. And for those of you who, again, <laughs> it's so crazy that we have viewership that rivals networks yeah, with really this is. budget. What in the world? It would have been great if Not we had budget. If we had budget to hire plus size models and if we could cover the insurance costs, <laughs> we would also have that uh, lady. You see that the, the billboard sign? It's, I speak my truth in my Calvins? Yeah. Hmm. I don't understand. Your truth is. 
varicose spider veins, okay? <laughs> and this is one thing too, like it really, we've skipped so, f we've, we've just skipped ahead every single track on the yeah. album. We're now on the beast, I think about it, like we didn't go from, obviously I think most men are not attracted to rail thin models. No. Right? You see on no. the runway, we've most overcorrected. Men aren't, right? But they didn't go from like, like Kate Upton Plus, they didn't go yeah. for some women who might be a little bit bigger. No, they've gone for people who would like, look at the chart of the BMI, they would have to extend the chart. <laughs> This is New incredibly like unhealthy. The tons of fun people. Sorry. And something, something uh, also that I wanted. I always feel bad for bigger women out there. And you let me know if you're a bigger woman because um, Garrett wants to meet you. I always feel bad. <laughs> Ouch. Hey, for hey, bigger hey. women who, like, one of the perks of being a bigger woman is you know larger appendage, and they have like the they have the blue the blue vein. You know what I mean? <laughs> like the blue vein going through. No, does anyone know what I'm, you know what I'm talking no, about? No, no, don't. Terrible. Tell us more. I also feel bad, I also, I also no, feel bad no. for for larger women who have flat posterior, flat butts. Is that a thing? Yeah. It's, it's one of the perks that should go with That's the territory. That's not even a thing. It used to be you wanted a more curvy woman, right? You would go with a bigger yeah. woman. But then when you see a woman who's big and also like from the side is, like you get certain people just look like, you know, you have a lot of South Americans, like Colombians, yeah. Cubans, they're very curvy. And then you, 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 you go, just go south of the border, like Me Mexicans. I mean, I, no, yeah. Uh, look okay. like bumblebees. Yeah, they look yeah. like bumblebees. A lot of them, what I'm saying is, well, look at all the greatest Mexican athletes. Fantastic athletes. Yeah. But they still, like, they, they, they don't look ripped. Hmm. Anyway. Tell us more yeah. about their butts. Spider sex. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you see Cain Velasquez was the Mexican heavyweight yeah, UFC yeah, yeah, champion. Yeah, yeah. Still going. He, he looks look? the same as a lightweight champion. Yeah. And that they're always, like, kind of, like, they're fit, but just smooth. Yeah. Like the guys in Bollywood movies. And Even then you go... He didn't look that fit either. Then you go to some guy in Iceland, and they're like 350 pounds with a six-pack. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. The point <laughs> I is... I really don't know. Different the, cultures have different genetics. The point is, we are the world. Finally, <laughs> <laughs> this week uh, is the 25th annual Asian Junior, hey, you know, Dang. and Cadet <laughs> Table Tennis Championship. I've been watching it. That's You're why I didn't watch Dave Chappelle. Chappelle. Is that Bill? And we do want to... Was it, was it half <laughs> Asian Bill? Bill. Oh. Yeah, look at oh. Oh. It could be. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> You think I'm joking, but I'm not. Could be it's me. because a monitor's really small. Or gender. And all Asians look alike. Also, not like bumblebees, though. No. no. No, they just look like they're going to crawl down the stairs in a stop-motion fashion. Ooh. Yeah. And then go, uh, I'm like, ah, oh, I should have known this house was haunted, little grudge boy. Again. Oh, okay. I should have known better than to trust you, little, little angry grudge boy. Panda. Um, <laughs> but yeah, table tennis champion. We here, by the way, Lotto's we like to expand our horizons. A lot of people don't know that we have sports betting pools, but yeah. it's more yeah. international. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. So we'd love to know Different who focus. your pick like to mix it up. is to win for the 25th annual Asian Junior and Cadet Table Tennis Championship. Is it uh, Yu Huan To, Pa Yik Man, Fen Hi Sin, how about Hyang Hyu Jen, mm -hmm. Lee Han Man, Choi Chun Kit, perhaps Tai Ming Wei, Kim Ung Sung, or Kao Jen Chu, also Ben Hyuk Tin, Jong Kik Tiat, Tsai Tu Chin, could it be that you favor Pa Ku Kyong, Fao Wai Chu, Pyong Song Gong? I don't know. Tweet me your answers at Louder with Crowder uh, at yeah. S Crowder, and uh, oh, yeah. I want to hear what it's you tough. think. Oh, I forgot. There's also there's also uh, Li Kai Yi, Yang Hu Chin, uh. and Fu Wai Ju. So. Oh. No, oh. no, oh. It's, it's it's Chu, not Ju. It's a different thing. Oh. Mel Gibson cut out. So angry. You get raped by a pack of Oh my! Uh, well, that's, no. Get out of here, Whoa. Mel Gibson. Whoa. Why does he? I feel like he uh, every time he has a key card. He does this every time and the pin code. I mean, I'm not even sure how. He and uses then when we it, change the no pin hands. code, he knows the new pin code. He's getting in through the just through the hits it with his nose, like he's in the H five. Do you think if he sees like a big woman with the blue vein, do you think he calls her uh, sugar blue vein? Probably. Not. So. Yeah. <laughs> For people who actually remember his DUI, the actual yeah, report terrible. of his crime. So bad. Call the officer sugar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a guy that's who not how just you open. Does it work? <laughs> that's a yeah. guy who doesn't just commit a crime. He's yeah. just going well past the yeah. line. He put sugar on top. I was like, hey, hands at hands at ten and two, right? Be careful. I'm like, I should say sugar. <laughs> no, no, Mel. No, that's the right know. move. No, 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 no. And the Jews plus wars. And you're definitely spending a night in the drunk tank. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? What I do? <laughs> you're so touchy. All right. So let's get to uh, this. Is this has been? You know, I, I, there's been so much outrage over this. I yeah. watched the special. I encourage everybody to yes, watch the new it. special. Yes, yep. legendary. Sticks and stones is a special. Very good. Uh, it's had the left in meltdown mode. Love it. Over the last week, in case you've missed it. And if you at home watching this on Netflix, remember, bitch, you clicked on my face. 
<laughs> so that's Dave Chappelle uh, promo for his special, which is now available on Netflix, Sticks and Stones. It has been controversial. I think that oh, Dave Chappelle talking about trans people is not Dave Chappelle at his finest. And he doesn't know what he's talking about. Hey, did you know she she used to be a man? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. A totally unbiased opinion Cold on the one subject, right? Yeah. Her at her finest. Just in case you, you know, need never pull the wool over the eyes on old Steven. <laughs> you played so much spot the training, you're good. Um, here's We've the thing. Lost. They're talking about a special called Sticks and Stones. This right. is what's so funny. Right. It might as well just be called Screw You. If you write a negative review of this because you're offended, you're taking the bait. And they took the bait. Bait taken. <laughs> And they so, couldn't resist. Well, something else that I've noticed, uh, it's a lot easier, and we'll get to the, the Rotten Tomatoes, the critics' reviews, right. and I want to actually leave yeah. a review below because I'd like to see what you guys yeah. think because we're not all accredited reviewers on Rotten Tomatoes, apparently. Yeah. You know they rejected us not long ago? Really? Oh, no. For good reason. Well, yeah, it's not surprising. <laughs> I, mean, I can see why. Um, I noticed, though, that there are a lot of ri the, the written reviews that yeah. you can see that are negative, but not a lot of video reviews, and the reason for it is they don't want to show clips yeah. because if they yeah. show the clip to tell you how offensive it is, most people will see the clips and go, well, that's funny. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Foil. Like wrong. So they can just write, write about the yeah. clip. They, they don't want to keep it in the context. They right. want to no. be able to isolate the language and then scream bloody murder offensiveness and right. then say, but you definitely don't watch you to make up your own yeah. mind. Well, you, he you oppresses listen. trans people. Yeah. No, no, the joke is you can never upset the alphabet people. Like, oh, right. that's yeah. kind of funny. That? And they're like, but they want to tell you he said that we should kill trans yeah. children. No. What were you no. saying there, Cordoba? Well, if you look at the Rotten Tomato score, there's like six people on there, yeah. and they're all negative. Yeah. Look, out of all of the people that review movies and TV shows and stand-up comedy, where are they? It's right. Because they think it's funny and they can't say it's funny. And they're right. like, oh, we're going to get lambasted. Keep, oh. keep, in, keep in mind, by the way, uh, Dave Chappelle is explicitly anti-Trump, okay? Right. Pro, relatively yep. speaking, True. gun control, pro, sometimes pro-choice, kind of keeps you guessing. He takes yeah. jabs at everybody in this special. Yeah, okay? He even headlined a protest against Trump's so-called, the Muslim ban. I know it's not a Muslim ban, but for the sake of trying to keep this short, I'm going to say that. <laughs> yeah, we'll refer to it as So then, w why the outrage? Right. Uh, basically, it all boils down to the fact that uh, Dave Chappelle jokes about transgenders. Yeah. Which should be fair game. Cancel. <laughs> done. <laughs> Dang and it. over. Oops. Right away. Totally done. And before we get started, um, uh, we have gotten started, I should say, before we continue. I don't know why I just said <laughs> Before been... we get started, it's like, what have you been doing this whole time? <laughs> well, leading Longest up to starting. intro. You're on drugs. Um, nope, just <laughs> me. He's, he's on drugs. <laughs> It's, it's important to note uh, there's a trend amongst a lot of the critics of Chappelle. Yeah. Um, like the Rotten Tomatoes, one of the reviewers, I think we have a, a screen, Ian Thomas Malone, transgender. Mm. Amanda Carey at The Advocate, transgender. Mm. Uh, ContraPoints, who's embarrassed, quote for Chappelle, <laughs> transgender. That's the one who used um, to be a man. Yeah. yeah. You spotted you know, it. You now spotted a woman. It. Yeah. Now a woman, though. Good call. Good woman. Call. Used to be, though, <laughs> just because I wouldn't want you to, to cause any offense. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So that, that might. <laughs> Provide some insight as and cancel <laughs> and yeah, cancel again. We've been canceled. Well, that's all. why it came out on Netflix. So you can't cancel. Well, it, yeah. it might give you some insight as to why the reviews are so negative. But we're going to look a little more closely as to um, how they've covered it. Okay. Well, it, it, one of the things that I love about it too, like that, obviously is a big deal. But the abortion stuff, where he talks about my money, my choice, and he says if if yeah. I'm wrong, then maybe we're wrong. I was like. Yeah. That was awesome. It, it was, was funny. Yeah. yeah, it was hilarious. Then we can figure it all out together. Like, yes, yeah. exactly. Well, like, it, come it, on. The thing is about that joke, and if you look at the founding fathers joke that he makes, mm -hmm. which should upset sort of conservatives, right? Because it's kind right. of taken. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's not nearly the outrage on the right as there is from left. So this because is a perfect special as a litmus test yeah. because the abortion bit where he, he basically goes and he says that he's pro-abortion, that he thinks right. it's a woman's right yep. to choose. And then he goes and says, and I think I shouldn't have to support it. I can at least abandon him. Sorry, spoiler alert. I'm pretty sure you've seen the joke. And so Still the funny. right doesn't get outraged because it's comedy over yeah. someone yes. saying that they are pro-choice, pro-abortion. But the left gets outraged that he says, you know what? Maybe we're all wrong. This is why I think the special is so important. W whether you think it's hilarious or not, I do think he handled this pretty brilliantly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, and, yeah. and just seeing who yeah. gets upset. So a yeah. couple of things that they've done here. This is something you see a lot. Uh, the left, they take comedy seriously, right? They've been reporting on this special. I wouldn't even say Always, as though yeah. it's an op-ed in a newspaper. They, they've been covering it like it's a news article yeah. in a yeah. newspaper. <laughs> yeah. Like not yeah. even the op-ed section of Fox News. Like not even Hannity or Carlson. They're acting like it's Shep Smith. Yeah. <laughs> Just straight down the middle. Well, this isn't the first time either. They're fact checking the Babylon B now on Twitter. Right. Like, yeah. So in that world, this is what, what makes sense. Work? Yeah. Well, of course, because they're so used to that sort of comedy that all their comedy yeah. that they get is mostly must be news. Yeah, it's yeah. absolutely right. just outrageous. Of stating it's more so Cooper is hilarious. Yeah. What are you talking about? I mean, if you go from Samantha B or Trevor Noah to the special, you up is down, down is up. What do I think? <laughs> so whatever you want. He doesn't even have an accent. This guy's yeah. black. 
<laughs> the thing is, they said they've called him a woman hating transphobe What's from this special. On? These jokes are really yeah. obvious. And something Jim yeah. Norton talks about, and I think this is important to kind of keep in mind why is there no pass for comedians? For some reason, there used to be more of a pass for hip hop artists, a little bit less yeah. now, yeah. except for Lil Nas X, who came out as gay. Who could have possibly seen that one coming? <laughs> um, no. But they gave it a pass quite a bit. You know, someone can go out and sing about gang banging and bitches and hoes and selling crack. And they didn't have a problem with Ludacris or Jay Z, yeah. right? It was about free speech. But then comedians, if they tell a joke, it's meant to be taken entirely seriously. Right. Whereas really, it's the art form that is supposed to have the most amount of leeway yeah. with someone being right. facetious or sarcastic. It's like a jester. Absolutely. Right. It's the la it should be the last safe haven for free speech in this country. And yet, it's not. But he spends a lot of time mocking white people. And you know what? He does. And I don't want to go where the identitarians do, like, well, that's a, why is that okay? Because it's a white genocide. No, I think it's funny. <laughs> when a black man does the basic white guy voice, I'm like, yeah, ah, it is kind of funny. I have an uncle who sounds like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All of them do. <laughs> and none of us can jump. <laughs> and here's another thing that they claim. They claim that Dave Chappelle is punching down, right? right? This is why they're so upset. And this is really typical of the left because we've talked about this. Their worldview is predicated on idea of, of societal structure, of classes, yeah. of oppression. And by the way, granting the automatic moral high ground to whoever they view as the underdog. Yeah. That's why yeah. they support Palestine over Israel, even though they kill children and they target them deliberately. Yeah. That's why they support people. Yeah. Uh, Antifa, uh, AOC raises yeah. money for Antifa, even though they had weapons and they were attacking cops. So they just see you, if you're the underdog, if you have less power, then you must be inherently morally right. So in right. this case, they argue that Chappelle is a bully because he's punching down at transgenders. Mm. And mm. lest you think I make this up, I hate that we have to do this. Oh boy. Uh, uh, really? Clip from the Young Turks. Uh, <laughs> Like you're doing it to be funny and to joke, but a lot of yes. people who are saying similar things are not doing it for that reason. What? So <laughs> that no more be jokes. less relevant. Right. So that this is all of a sudden no like, comedy. okay, so if someone else is using it in a terrible way and they're using it to foment hate and to commit hate crimes or whatever we're going to call them these days, and now all of a sudden if you tell a joke about it, you might as well be wearing a hood. Right. Is that? Is yeah. That, is I, that don't, I don't see how it could be any less relevant. Like if I say, hey, I prefer grape Kool Aid to blue Kool Aid, you know what I'm talking about, quarterback there. And, and yeah, David man. Duke is at home and he goes, I agree. You know, hold me responsible exactly. because David Duke, like, we just happen to like the wait, same Wait, 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 wait a minute. Are you saying you breathe air like David Duke does? You freaking racist. I know. <laughs> wait, it's just, also, it's, I have him on sorry. speed dial. Also, I'm oh, the only person left oh on the God. landline and speed dial. <laughs> So this is what's <laughs> important is, is, is Dave Chappelle right. in his special, if you haven't watched it, he clearly demonstrates that the LGBTQ, as he refers to as alphabet people, they are in power. Right. And he does, and he, he, he undergirds this with some very funny bits. He talks about how he, he wasn't allowed to say a f on the Chappelle show. And he realized that he'd written an unwritten rule in Hollywood, right? Again, he talks about the alphabet people. He's not punching yeah. down at all. He's punching up. This is what's important to know. Yeah, if you need any more point. proof, is there any... Case in point, is there any more powerful, you know this half inch yeah, bill because yeah, you know, yeah. we have some, uh, some legal documents at some point here. Is there any more powerful organization out there that you can think of outside of Google, YouTube, I mean, maybe, maybe Facebook, but they're up there, right? When we're talking yeah. about corporate overlords, for some reason yeah. when it's convenient for the left, they, they often don't mention Google yeah. and YouTube. <laughs> exactly. But let's assume they're powerful. Let's say not number one, because I don't want to use an extreme example to make a point. I don't want to, right. I don't want to engage Good in job. hyperbole here. Don't do it. Because you might fact check me. <laughs> Like, actually, Amazon is worth more, and if you Dad look at the... Oh, I'm sorry! What are they shipping, though? I'm Great. sorry, I was, I was shooting from the hip. I didn't realize you were going to fact check a joke. Uh, <laughs> here you go. CEO of YouTube, look at her cowering before the LGBTQ AAIP alphabet community. The decision that we made was very hurtful to the LGBTQ no. community. Really sorry about that. No. I'm really personally very sorry, and I it was yeah. not our intent. We'll speak to people from the LGBTQ community, um, make sure that we're incorporating that going forward in terms of how we think about it. I am truly, truly sorry for uh, the whoa. hurt that we caused Jeez. that community. I really do apologize for the for the hurt that we caused. <sighs> <laughs> wow. That's harder to watch than Maggie Gyllenhaal. So, Ooh. Ooh. correct though. Yeah. Ah, uh, you know what? Extreme, Again, hyperbole, but correct. Not exactly. <laughs> but she does a gross disservice to the International Clint Howard Lookalike Foundation. <laughs> I just want to make sure that you. Everyone. She does not speak for all of them. Very clear. Think not about this for a second. All. The world's most powerful big tech uh -huh. organizations shudder 
in fear yeah. at the mere thought of a video suggesting that hormone replacement therapy for six-year-olds could be unhealthy and that it might be found to be trending. Yeah. That's what she's talking about. She's talking about this channel, by the way. And this is the yeah. entire purpose of comedy. I think a lot of people miss this. The whole purpose of comedy as an art form is to speak truth to power, is to poke your, poke your finger like yeah. your Rahm Emanuel yeah. in the shower in the chest of the person who has authority. The court jester was the only person allowed to mock the king at all. Yep. Yeah, That's absolutely. what it's designed to do. That's what Dave Chappelle was doing and then these same people out there say well listen how dare you bully and he goes well, hold yeah. on a second i think you're the bully silence <laughs> exactly <laughs> right well, no, this, isn't, no more this isn't the 1970s or 80s or 90s when the the lgbt community kind of started their movement or even kind of progressed further every single company they didn't start i know movement. not start progressed they in were their lying movement. dormant stop it Every single like corporation cyst. in the United States right now <laughs> would bow down if this community went after them. They would they would issue an apology yeah. like that. This right. organization has more power than almost any other organization in this country. Right. That's Absolutely. And and one of the uh, uh, just to extend on that, like one of the one of the questions you would ask is where's the power? Let's go back to who the reviewers were, right? Right. No, no yeah. one else yeah. no one else has the power to be able to put words on a public website like Rotten Tomatoes, except for these few who have decided that they are going to vilify yeah. the jokes that Dave Chappelle is saying. And, and they're not willing to say that, hey, you know, actually, he's he's punching at everybody. Right. Uh, they only want to focus on the, pa the fact that they're punching at their particular brand of authoritarianism, which is, in fact, really proving the yeah. point. Right. Well, he's okay. a black Muslim, keep in mind. Yeah, he's a true. black Muslim. Yeah. And he made fun and of- And he thinks trans, he thinks the LGBTQ yeah. is kind of weird. It's and let's be weird. honest, a lot of us do. It doesn't mean that we hate anybody, but he thinks it's a little bit odd. That's what he talks about. That's his greatest crime here. Yeah. A black Muslim comedian who has largely shaped black American culture for our generation. He's effectively this generation's Eddie Murphy, Richard yeah. Pryor. Yeah. Yeah. You, it would be tough to argue against that. He just made fun of people who chop off their c**ks. <laughs> That's not a stretch. <laughs> Oh. That's Didn't say he hated them. He said that's kind of funny. All right. <laughs> Speaking of which, notification bell, hit it if you're subscribed because uh, apparently subscriptions don't mean anything. Or just bookmark the page. You can check back every single day. That's safe. Uh, join yeah, up Mug Club. Letoffcard.com slash Mug Club. You get Dave Rubin now. He's going to be oh, here at the Blaze right, yeah. uh, when the show launches. We will give you the exact... It's pretty soon. I don't know the exact yeah. date. Yeah. And subscribe on iTunes. Uh, here's another thing that they claim to the left in handling this. And I want to see if you disagree with anything that we're talking about here because I understand this is a little more nuanced. I hate using that word, but it is here. Um, it's a good word. They're also saying, the left are saying, that because Chappelle said these things in this special, it must must mean that cancel culture is just a figment of your imagination. It feels like a lot of comedians reach that point where all they want to talk about is the stuff that they're not allowed to talk about that they always talk about. Yes. yes. They're not so, allowed to even though they do all the time. It's almost as though that's a comedian's job. <laughs> yeah. it's like, Can you imagine saying this about Lenny that. Bruce? It seems to me, by the way, he's straight. It seems to me <laughs> that Lenny Bruce just wants to go up stage and like Point, shine a light on societal taboos. Well, that, exactly. That Whatever happened to point. Phyllis Diller? <laughs> like, that, I don't that makes the point. It actually, comedians are like the last line of defense. And so if they're talking about this, saying we can't say certain things, that tells you that the, the, the culture yeah. has gone too and, far. And I think this is important to note is, is yes, Chappelle pulls this up because he's already extremely famous. But yeah, as he yeah. points out in his yeah. special, famous people aren't immune. It's easier sure. for them, but look at Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart oh, was gosh, banned yeah. from hosting the Oscars because he effectively tweeted a gay joke. Now, if he's not actually Kevin Hart, you know what happens? He's not banned from the Oscars. He's banned from speaking at clubs, from yeah. performing at comedy clubs. He's yeah. banned from speaking at colleges. So they have a little bit more leeway, yeah. but they're not completely immune. And by the way, famous people, they have their reputations destroyed for far less. So here's something else to, to keep in mind. Uh, Chappelle, his clip uh, from Netflix, where he's talking about uh, Jesse Smollett, Jesse Smollett, spoiler alert for people who haven't Smollett. seen it. Smollett. It was trending, number two on YouTube, with unbleeped, you know, use the word f and the, and he'd say the uh, N word. He would say right. the N word a lot. So he said, yeah. so yeah. repeatedly he said f in this, and it was unbleeped, and I can't even say f you want. See, just you're hearing the beep. I'm saying the actual word. F so he said, f and I don't even want to say the word. Nope, I'm not going to say the other one because then I'll, I'll, I'll not only I'll get banned, there's going to be a summit. There's going to be a march. Yes. So I don't want to say the word. <laughs> don't. I'll be at the front yeah. of that march. <laughs> just a quarter of you, though. You know yeah, who will be least offended <laughs> by it? If you repeated Dave Chappelle's bit to Dave Chappelle and use the yeah. words that he used. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, fine. That, that's he the would truth. laugh. Now, keep in mind, so he was allowed to make those comments because he's famous. There's right. so many ways. Our channel was nearly banned just for having the word figs on a shirt. <laughs> just for being suggested. Well, technically, it actually be. didn't say figs. It had a picture of figs. Yes. yes. That's true. That's so that was clearly really meant that it was a different yeah. word. Yeah, yeah we right. wanted to let yeah. people know that it was about fruit. Yeah. yeah. Also, some Things people might, good. if we didn't have that, people might confuse it for a date. 
Ooh, that's true. Most people don't know their figs from their dates. So, date if you need more evidence, by the way, <laughs> can, cancel culture is real. Uh, ContraPoint, the transgender, used to be a man, by the way. Right there, you just watch <laughs> bashing Chappelle on the Young oh, yeah. Turks. Not that anymore. Make sure you get it right. Transgender Make sure you get it right. Not anymore. Yeah. Trans Not anymore. from one oh to gosh. another. Can it's I, an easy on, mistake. Can we, can I need to re-review. Can we go back? It's an easy I mistake know, to make. You get, you just for, at first glance, you'd be like, so clearly a woman. Now. <laughs> So, uh, ContraPoints Contra was canceled yesterday for oh, not wow. being woke enough for trans Twitter. Oh, there was a no, cancel seriously? culture campaign run against <laughs> wow. Z, and Z deleted yeah. Z's account. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. But there's still, look, there's still this lasting damage from people like this who are out there screaming at people like Dave Chappelle and saying, you can't joke about this. And it was a hilarious bit. Like right. the car, yeah. like you don't want them to drive. The, that was hilarious. The yeah. whole thing was so yeah. funny. Again, the whole thing, it was it was a double dog dare you to do yes. what you're doing and oh, yeah. you're doing it. You're going, he he thinks we're not, oh, is this reverse psychology? He thinks that if he says this, we're not going to, well, we're going to do it. We're going to, we're going to go right. We'll be right where he wants us. Yeah. And you know, all the other alpha, you know, all the letters in the alphabet were laughing and saying, that's exactly right. It is remarkable to me. This was also something too. Um, leftists, they're convinced that um, Chappelle, this is the argument that they finally use in case you didn't agree, is that he's just out of touch oh. with the current audience. Oh. It seems oh, like yeah. he thinks. Like this guy knows. Everyone <laughs> feels the way he feels, but they won't say it. Right, so and I just don't think that that's the case. The problem big is, room. he thinks that those people laughing in that big room are still how the entire world yeah. is, they're, they're and they're close. not. That to me seems like their failure <laughs> really? as a comic, right? It's their failure to really listen to their own audience. Uh. Woman! <laughs> Whoa! But think about he goes, he thinks truth. that everybody, what he's basically saying is, he thinks that everybody in this theater uh, laughing thinks that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> and he's wrong. Or, or somehow, no, I think the other uh, alternative interpretation is that they're saying that every person in the world who thinks this is funny somehow made it into the theater. <laughs> right. No yeah, one yeah. else yeah, exactly. yeah. in the entire yeah. world is yes. going well, to Dave think Ch Dave that Chappelle, there's even yeah. a single thing to laugh at. Right, like Acorn yeah. was shuttling them in for votes. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, Dave Chappelle tours the country. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's he's not the only place. Yeah. And I, I bet people still laugh in other places. Yeah. Right. I would imagine so. They yes. don't just travel with him. Tiny venues. They're making this argument. He's out of touch. Yeah, I guess he's out of touch. Though, if you look at the Rotten Tomatoes critic score versus the audience, mm. it's almost as though it's the opposite of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. 33% from 16, critics, 99% from Jesus. the audience. Waiting for them to remove the audience score. So. <laughs> In re this is the, this That's is, unreliable. <laughs> yeah. He, he is showing that the left is demonstrably out of touch. So yeah. you can contrast that with Hannah Gatsby's uh. terribly unfunny Nanette special. <laughs> Got 100% <laughs> on Rotten Tomatoes. Seriously. From the critics. Panned by the public, only 40%. Did you see that's yeah. one where she goes, there's yeah, nothing funny about self-deprecation. <laughs> self-deprecation is self-humiliation. You're a fat lesbian Australian. Self-humiliation is the only card you have to play. That's all you got, lady. Don't take it away. <laughs> Many cards. I say this. Humiliation is largely the only card I have to play. Is she New Zealand? I have no idea. Australia? Maybe. We Who don't cares? know. One I'm an ignorant two. American. Not I don't All care. of them together. Well, you know what's funny? Zealand, it's like uh, the idea of, a, or, or we're going to go ahead and say, uh, oh, yeah, it's fine. We're going to we're gonna lump in this idea of what you decide is funny. And if I don't think it's funny, then no one should think it's funny. And if you think it's funny, you're a racist. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. Or, and it's yeah, like, bigot. Yeah. I, I mean, right. how many, Maybe I mean, racist. could you imagine if a conservative was to go to a black Muslim comedian and say, you are a racist? They would the, the, the left would go nuts. Well, this yeah, is what they, yeah. what they did with conservatives. They would say, you were racist, right, if you didn't vote for Barack Obama. So now they right, have yeah. a black Muslim comedian <laughs> who is married to an Asian woman, by the way. Yeah. And they can't say, <laughs> but now he has done exactly what conservatives have done. And he's not conservative. He's a liberal, no, yeah. uh, Dave Chappelle. And I'm not using the word leftist because I think he's one of the few people who is deserving of the title liberal. Yeah. He's more classically liberal. You can be pro-gun right. control and still not be a part of the anti-free speech outrage mob. Right. And I think that's Dave Chappelle. Yeah. So remember that next time he does something that you disagree with conservatives, right. don't yeah. doggy pile on him or try and get him banned and just say, oh, I didn't agree with this one, I didn't like the special, right. and move on. But um, th this is important. First off, the, the videos on Netflix, uh, their YouTube, millions of plays. Usually they're getting about yeah, 25,000 yeah. plays Doing very, very well. per video. But they couldn't silence him calling him a racist because he's black. But he did the same thing that conservatives did and that he went off the reservation and uh, he expressed an opinion that they don't like. Yeah. So they go, hold on a second, we have to use the same tactic that we use against conservatives to silence them. We can't say racist. I know, black people can still be transphobic. Transphobic. 
Yeah. That's what they do. It's the same exact technique. They're just going to keep going down the list, and that's why peas and crocodiles is futile. But uh, Nanette from Hannah Gatsby, 100%. You know what else? While we're talking about out of oh, touch, boy. knock down the house. 100% yeah. from critics, 25% from the audience. So I, I have to, by the way, Nanette from <laughs> Hannah Gatsby, 100%, oh and um, knock down the house, 100%. I had to do research as to what else had gotten 100% rotten tomatoes. Yeah. There are not many. No, no, no. <laughs> it's a that's short, a high same ball. league. Very it's a really short high list. score. Yeah. I mean, usually you would. You know, there'd be some some semblance of continuity. It's like, sweetie, what do you want? What do you want to watch tonight? Citizen Kane, <laughs> or knock down the house? <laughs> I don't know. Schindler's List. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Something good. <laughs> At least a hundred. At least a hundred. For me, it's a hundred or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I think Citizen Kane is up there. Let's try knock down the house. Oh my god. It's just, just better. It's the same. It's the same. 101. 100%. 101%. If you just wanted to see he was out of touch with the general public. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But does anybody really care about the critic scores anymore? This is a, no. a genuine question because you've got like the public scores to be able to look at. What people rate products online, what they rate movies, what they rate whatever, right? Do people really even care anymore? Like they no. they are the most useless people in the world right now. I can look I can look at what 30,000 people think and get a really good idea or seven transgender people that rate this. <laughs> Well, then I Nanette, think I'm going to take the 25,000 people, right? Am I right? Am I crazy? The score yeah. was, was 80 reviewers, yeah. certified reviewers, and it got 100%. And then the audience score was like 1,500 audience scores, and it was 25. So, right. yeah. But if none of this works, saying that he's a bully, saying that he's transphobic, saying that he's punching down, saying he's out of touch, what do they do? This is what the left always does with comedians. They just claim, you guessed it, that he's unfunny. Uh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, he's kind of stuck at this very basic level that he can't get past. And, it's, and you know, right. he could just not do the trans jokes because he obviously hasn't, doesn't Don't really joke have about anything me. very incisive to say about it. And so it's, it's actually, I'm just sort of embarrassed for him watching him. <laughs> <laughs> Why wow. didn't Dave Chappelle think of that? No, <laughs> nothing incisive so to say. Crazy. Wow, just you know, we, oh, the news commentary was missing from your comedy <laughs> Netflix yeah. special. Do you mean that he just? I, he just needed to know that he shouldn't joke about your thing. Uh, right. You should be mad. Woman now. So just Woman. make sure. <laughs> so we're clear. That if, I mean, it would be fine if he just didn't do the trans jokes. Oh. <laughs> then, is that the only rule? And then someone else says, yeah. yes. And by the way, don't make the trans amputee jokes. And then you have oh. somebody else going, and don't make the uh, trans ageist jokes because I believe oh, that I'm a six-year-old girl yeah. named Stephanie who screws Harley Davidson riders. And everyone mm. says, just don't make jokes about me. And then you have Hannah Gatsby saying, don't make jokes about lesbian fat Australians who refuse to do <laughs> comedy and call it a comedy special. I mean, at what point do you just, just, just admit you don't like it and move on. Right. I'm embarrassed for him. Oh, well, I'm sure. Let's get <laughs> Dave sure Chappelle on my landline with the speed dial. <laughs> One of the most prolific comedic minds of our generation. All of a sudden, this is something that's important yeah. to note. All of a sudden, they did it with Dennis Miller, became unfunny overnight. Right. No. And they claim it's embarrassing. They did the same thing with Norm MacDonald. Exactly. Right? Norm MacDonald, Dennis Miller. They did it uh, at one point with Bill Burr when they thought he was getting mm -hmm. problematic. And now yeah. they're doing it with Dave Chappelle. How did he become so unfunny so quickly? Yeah. Is well, he like Jesus where you touch his mic and he's losing his powers? <laughs> it, well, I think it's obvious because, you know, he's not selling out any of the locations multiple nights in every city across the entire country. Oh, Many of which in black neighborhoods. Yeah. Right? I mean, How clearly me? no one is going. It's, it's obvious that this is a 0% rating when people go to yeah. the live show. Yeah, well, and, and I mean, this is funny. I feel like with comedy, I'm kind of the average Joe, right? I can laugh at, at funny stuff In on many every ways. part of the spectrum. Thank you very much. You can shut up. Uh, <laughs> this is funny for everybody, right? He makes fun of the, the white meth zombies at the end. I thought that was hilarious as well. Like, if you don't laugh at this, if you can't laugh at some of the stupidity that we see in the country right now and have a, a comedian making these points that are actually yep. pretty intelligent points that he's making, right? and making them funny, if you can't look at that and go, ah, that is pretty good, well, then you just don't know how to laugh. I, I will say this, and I think this is a pretty important, um, I, I don't want to say important observation, now I sound like Chank, which by the way, it makes me really sad. I know I know we're running <laughs> Young Turks clips, right? and we can't run them anymore once we pass them in subscribers. We're gonna yeah. do the live stream when we pass the Young Turks oh, and subscribers for down. so much less money. So fun! But I feel like we'd be bullying, punching down. Do you guys think that? Let me know. I once think we, we should pass punch them in, Once we pass the them in subscribers, we should we ever make fun of them again? I, I don't think it's... Yes. I don't want to be a bully. No, no, yes. no. We're be a bully. Send I them don't, a cookie don't, bouquet. I don't want to be a Dave Chappelle. <laughs>
Oh. Oh. Um, you don't want to be a black Muslim? But they do this. They've done this with Dave Chappelle, <laughs> and they, they've done it with, with us on this show. What they try to do when You're they reductive. say this person isn't funny, they separate the actual joke from what offends them, mm -hmm. right? They did this with when they go, well, uh, what Stephen, Stephen Crowder claims it's jokes, but I don't think that uh, calling someone uh, uh, a lispy gay Mexican is a joke. Well, that wasn't the joke. That's what <laughs> offended you. The joke was, go watch the apology video. That's 20 minutes long of jokes. That's not right. the joke. Like with Dave Chappelle, the joke about people driving, the, the, the gays yeah. driving the car, and trans people making the ride feel like it's way longer than it needs to be. That's the joke. You were offended <laughs> by the fact that he made fun of transgender. So they say, well, I don't see the joke in uh, uh, making fun of transgenders, that's not the joke. You're right. separating what offended you from what the actual joke was. And that's why they don't want to run the clips. And here's a general rule uh, that I use when it applies to anything, jokes or commentary, right? If you extend the clip that you see that typically generates outrage, extend it 30 seconds in either direction. It'll usually go one of two directions. If you extend it, it's either less offensive or you understand the point to it or it gets worse. For example, remember yeah. we did that joke about Christine Blasey Ford? Yeah. Uh, the authorities still uh, what, are considering the distinct possibility that she's a, a lying whore was the joke. Yeah. 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 Well, the Young Turks, I hate, you know, we can't use them anymore once we can surpass them, but that so live stream soon. is going to be a lot of fun. Yep. Um, <laughs> when people extended it, 30 seconds in either direction, what they saw was that we used all of the evidence uh, as the setup. And the punchline right. was that yeah. police officers, and people said, oh, you know what? I don't even necessarily agree, but it's, it's really not as offensive as you make it seem. Now, if you extend it, for example, someone saying that, I don't know, I like seeing American war heroes getting killed in Iraq and we deserve 9-11, and you go, oh, what's that? That sounds bad. And you extend it, Ooh, and it's just nose. them going, seriously, I effing think we deserve 9-11. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Seriously, I effing hope this guy gets taken out yeah. by jihadists. And you go, whoa, that, uh. I extend, I Provided more context, it's context. almost like it's worse. <laughs> I mean, Give you a little more rope. I, that's a rule that I use. Separate what offends you from the yeah. actual context and content of the joke, and then whatever it is that offends you, give it more context. Give it 30 seconds in, in both directions. And then if at that point you're not sure, give it a minute in both directions. It's usually pretty easy to find out where they're coming from. And there is nothing sadder than while we're talking about this than watching woke leftists explain comedy to one of the greatest comics of our yeah. time. I think yeah. that's what Bob bothers yeah. me about this so much right now is this this uh, this more this sermonizing this ver yeah. and I hate to use the word virtue signaling we do have to get to John O'Hurley in a little bit Jay Peterman yeah. let's assume though that the left is being genuine I always typically assume that they're being genuine let's yeah. assume that everyone is actually offended and genuinely hurt yeah. by these jokes okay here how about this you don't have to find it funny you just have to acknowledge that it's comedy Let's start with that. Start with that, context over content, and then maybe we can find some common ground. Otherwise, it's just point scoring. Don't have to find it funny, just admit that it's comedy. All right, uh, John O'Hurley, Jake Peterman, coming up right after this. We have to go. Mel's not around, is he? Oh. Nope, nope, thank God. Oh, there. I think it's time to go. I hope you're gonna come with me. From the network that brings you louder with Crowder. People I truly admire and respect. Comes a man who goes by many names. Straight white supremacist, neo-Nazi, alt-right racist. Sexist, homophobic. Jesus, Voldemort, Optimus Prime, Kylo Ren, Falcor. Secretly a conservative. Who also happens to be gay. You see what just happened there? I just played some identity politics, didn't I? The Rubin Report is coming to Blaze TV. We're trying to talk about big ideas in an honest, open way. That's it. Yes, that is it. Subscribe to Blaze TV through Mug Club today, where not only do you get this show, but apparently you get Dave Rubin now too. So that's cool. Oh, 
Hello, my name is Teresa and I am a lesbian. Did you know that lesbian couples face many of the same problems that also plague straight couples? This ranges from petty family squabbles all the way to domestic violence. In fact, dyke on dyke crimes occur at even higher rates than straight couples living in rural areas. According to research, almost 44% of lesbian couples experience domestic violence compared to 35% of straight women, 26 for gays. Not to be a Debbie Downer or anything, but I was actually slapped by my girlfriend on the way here. It's time we put an end to this senseless violence by providing shelter for victims in well-carpeted rooms. Please donate at batterlesbians.org and let's make sure that no more lesbians take beatings from their partners. You too can stop the abuse by giving generously at batteredlesbians.org. Now, Quarter Black, is he, what is he saying in that nicey, song? Nicey, nicey, zoo, zoo. That doesn't make any sense. It's from a TV show. It's just sound bites, it's all, you know? Who does he think he is? Bob Dylan? Makes no sense. Uh, <laughs> our next guest, I'm absolutely thrilled to have him on the show. You know, I've talked yeah. about some guests that I've wanted for a long time, and then some guests where I just go, oh my gosh, if we could get, get him, yeah. that'd be great. Uh, because one of our producers, and now I'm going to let the cat out of the bag, you know, Brendan. He was back there, and he's looking yeah. at the monitor, and he goes, wait, is that Jay Peterman? That's what I said I when said, I looked at the I calendar. said, yes. And he's, I said, did you not look at the guest list? So he's fired. But it's flattering <laughs> oh, to our next like guest him. because uh, everyone knows who he is. But he's, he's yeah. done so much, obviously. His, his show, uh, uh, Man with Standards, is a solo show actually right now. He's going to be performing at uh, Feinstein's uh, at Vitello's. Feinstein's at Vitello's, I think, September 20th, 21st. He can correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, you know him potentially as Jay Peterman on Seinfeld, host of many different shows, including Family Feud, the National Dog Show, which I want to talk to him about. I watch it every single Thanksgiving. He's what you call on the industry, uh, not a triple threat because he's more than oh. a multi-hyphenate, oh. uh, nice. but uh, Mr. Mr. John O'Hurley, how are you, sir? Well, I'm great, and I appreciate that wonderful introduction. It doesn't seem to go far enough, so continue if you'd like. Well, I don't have much else to go on. Now, one thing I will say, you, you don't mind, do you, when people bring up Jay Peterman, because you've, you've done a lot, but that's, that's a role that I think so many people will remember you from, because it's one of the most beloved characters in all of, of television. There's not a day that I don't wake up and I pinch myself for the, the, A, the joy of performing that role and the time that I did and for everything that has followed ever since then. It's, uh, I've lived a blessed life because of that. Uh, I got to play in that championship team and that championship season. That's a good way to look at it. It seems that we, we've talked about this quarter black. Yeah. It seems people who've done other things aside from one iconic role, they don't have a problem with people bringing it up. We've had some performers in the show like, don't bring that up. Yeah. And then we have people like Dean Kane who say, sure, we'll let's talk, talk about, about Superman because they've done other things. So once you're accomplished, yeah. it seems like you're not bothered by it. We've had people go both ways, but I'm also horrendously unlikable. Mr. Hurley, <laughs> you're on the program um, for a multitude of reasons, but recently you spoke out, this has been all over the news, uh, against the action specifically of some uh, Will and Grace cast members, Deb, uh, Deborah Messing. Um, they were talking about, I want to provide some context here, Hollywood fundraiser for Donald Trump. And then Deborah Messing tweeted out, let everyone know who's attending. Um, and this uh -huh. was seen as potentially kind of a modern-day blacklist, and uh, you've been making the rounds talking cool. about this. Can you kind of explain for people who may not be familiar with it w what your reasoning was for speaking out and, and how you view this situation? Because it's, it's lit the Internet ablaze. Well, I, I have no, I, I can't reason why they would say something like that, but it, it underscores a further problem in Hollywood is that for some reason Hollywood has a liberal mentality, and I understand that. But I don't, what I don't understand is the lack of civility in that other alternative points of view can't be uh, equally absorbed and, and, um, uh, and entertained. Um, it's as though they've enjoyed the bully, pu bully pulpit um, by using by using the, the strength of their position in Hollywood to uh, to kind of silence the the uh, I wouldn't say just conservative thought I would say um, you know any any type of libertine type of any anything alternative to the liberal way of thinking doesn't work in Hollywood and and it's what what, what is so sad is that I hear this on every set people will come up to me and say, well, I'm so glad that you're a vocal conservative because we're afraid to talk around here for, free, for fear of being let go. Right. I said, isn't that awful? Yeah. That we live in that kind, that we are the freest, yeah. uh, most prosperous country in the world, and yet our enter this one spot of, the, of this, our human experience, our entertainment, has to be so sequestered into one style of thinking. That's it. 
right. as though nothing else exists and, and right. no one else can have an alternative thought. And I find that shameful. Now, have you always been more right-leaning, more conservative, or was this kind of a, a development? Because it certainly seems to many that you're, you're more um, outspoken in a very civil way, I want to be clear. You're not going around throwing bombs, but it, it seems that people are more aware of it now. Have you always been this way? I'm sorry, I didn't quite understand the question you were... Have, have you always been more conservative, or is this more of a development uh, throughout your life? Because you've been in the entertainment industry for a very, very long time. Well, I've always, I think I've always been, uh, I think I've always been a conservative. Uh, I just didn't understand what I was. Um, but the, 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 the principles, I think, that I've developed in my life, I think, uh, uh, parallel the conservative thought. Uh, and, and I don't apologize for them. They're well thought out. They're well based. And, and I think they deserve a voice because I think I deserve a voice. It's as simple as that. Um, and, and I also, the other thing I feel is that I'm a little curious as to why this political tone is so important in Hollywood. You know, I'm, I'm one of these actors that subscribes to the Spencer Tracy school of, of acting, which is say your lines, hit your marks and go home. Don't right. make a big thing about it. You know, I mean, a celebrity is defined as someone who gets to do a lot of things that they have no business doing. Right. Um, and uh, right. I, I just like to just do my work and go home. And I don't lead with my politics. I don't live by politics. And, you know, oddly enough, that's what I find that kind of distinguishes the conservative mind is that they tend to think of themselves as responsible for their own destiny in life and they don't require a government or a support group of any sort that they're more individualistic and so consequently they're tougher to find and they're certainly tougher to poll as we found out in the last election um, but I seem that seems to to coincide with conservative thinking is that people just end up you know I just do my work and I go home and I don't make a big deal about it Right. It's, it's tough to meddle effectively uh, in people's lives who base their worldview on not having people meddle. <laughs> you know, it's, all you have to do is, all you have to look at is it's a caller ID at 6 p.m. at night, and you know you're not answering that phone call. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, that's, that's probably why we yeah, think those on the like, left haven't learned you, caller ID. I don't know how you find I don't know how you'd find a conservative, frankly. I, I don't know where you'd find him. You're certainly not going to reach him on the telephone. That's a good point. Um, I don't know, maybe email if you're a Nigerian prince. <laughs> it seems to me maybe those, those phishing uh, emails work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you, you answer those first because uh, actually I have my investment attorney working on, uh, on my retirement plan through some very, very prosperous and uh, high, uh, some potential uh, Nigerian uh, uh, yes. mutual funds. I, I, just, uh, yes. I, don't, I don't want to push those because that's that's mine. Right, I understand. Not so much an attorney as it is just a, a hobo with a paper sack and a tube of toothpaste. That's that's mine. He's. I feel my oh. retirement is in good hands. I don't fully understand the difference between IRA or Stewart. tax deferable, but he seemed like a friendly chap. Something you just said that I find interesting. You talked about uh, Hollywood in the bully pulpit. Now, they sort of predicate this, this resistance idea and the idea of effectively uh, not doxing, but releasing the list of people who might support Trump. They predicate this on the idea that the bully pulpit is a president, right? The president of the United States is, is a Republican. Therefore, they must be the underdog. But you referred to Hollywood as the bully pulpit, and I do see it that way. I'm curious as to why. Do you believe that Hollywood um, maintains more power over the culture at large than, say, the president? Does, does Hollywood, I'm sorry, what? Does, do you believe that Hollywood exerts more power than, say, the president? Because you use the term bully pulpit, and, and I would agree with the sentiment that Hollywood has a greater bully pulpit than, let's say, President Trump and Twitter. But they act as though they're the victims and conservatives are the bullies. They, they feel um, absolutely no reservation at openly and publicly shaming the president of the United States. And I've never heard that before. Uh, and I've never heard it so um, done with such, you know, as though, yeah, it's, we're all just members of the good old boy club and our job is to insult the president as much as we possibly can. There's just a visceral anger towards this man that that supersedes any sort of civility. And, um, and, and I hate it. I hate it. We have no respect for the office of the president. And, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm ashamed of our industry uh, and, the, and the way that they portray themselves and the fact that they feel that they have permission to do it at the expense of, believe it or not, a very silent, a silent um, uh, population that feel differently but aren't allowed to speak up. Right. Uh, I guarantee you that there's a lot of people at the Academy Awards that would love to have stood up and say, you know, boo. 
Um, yes, just our, just that uh, way too. Uh, boo. Just that way too. <laughs> That's how they would have said. It. Boo. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> exactly. They, they don't hold Excuse it because me, that would be Juju somewhat pedestrian. Beat. Excuse me, but I'm Juju on that beat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, a boo. Um, you know, let me ask you this because obviously you, you know played for multiple seasons. Jay Peterman on Seinfeld, and that's Brilliant. well, it was rated the number one show of all time until The Wire supplanted it. I don't know how that worked. I don't. You, maybe you have some friends mm-hmm. on The Wire. I don't know anyone who loves no. The Wire. I don't know what it is. Everyone always wants to say that you should love The Wire, but when that list changed and Seinfeld wasn't number one, I was pissed. Yeah. Anyway, I'm getting it's off on no a tangent Seinfeld. here. Come on. It's no Seinfeld. Um, back then on that set, because we know obviously that Larry David has been more of a, a of a liberal activist. I wouldn't say liberal, but he's talked about certain uh, issues. Um, was the tension as palpable back then in the entertainment is- industry as today, or do you think it's developed at a rapid rate? I, I think they have found, um, I think the industry um, uh, with uh, with Trump's um, inauguration, I think, found uh, that they just gave themselves permission to say whatever they wanted to. Um, I don't know that I, I don't know that I saw it as much during the um, uh, Obama administration, but I do see definitely that there is a visceral hatred for this human being, and it supersedes any um, um, any ability to um, absorb the good things and the promises that he's kept in his administration, which is what I I don't have to love my president, I don't have to love him, but right. I do respect him. And I do respect the things that he said he would accomplish and the things that he has accomplished. And I think it's and I think in, in face of all of the obstacles and the derision that he has to live through every day, I don't know another human being that could do it or live with it. Um, I, I'd be off a bridge uh, if I had to go through what he had to go through every single day. But uh, he has the mentality and the temperament to, to and, and the thickest skin I've ever seen on a human and human being. Uh, and he's able to. Um, to function outside of it. And I think he has the, the good of the country at heart. Uh, and again, I like the things that he's accomplished because they were the things he said he would accomplish. Right, and I think that's why a lot in Hollywood don't like him because he has accomplished yeah. the things that he said he would accomplish. Uh, final question before we go to the Web Extended because I do want to pick your brain on dogs a little bit. You've said that some people have come up to you and said, thanks for saying this because we would like to speak out but we're afraid of, of losing our jobs. Have you had anyone uh, come to you and with the uh, with the opposite kind of sentiment, you know, poke their finger in your chest and say, "Hey buddy, hey chief, you better cut it out, pal." No, I have never had anybody um uh, try to um curtail or or censor or edit anything that I that I say. Um but then I think about what I say. So I I can't think you could find too much offensive about what I say. What I do feel from people is that I am attacked for feeling the way that I feel. Right. Uh, people will come up to me and say, well, right. I used to like you, but I no longer like you because of your <laughs> politics. As though okay. I lead with my politics. Well, I'm okay. not my circumstances. I'm a human being. My politics help basically organize the value and the structure of my life. They are my relationship with my government, but that's all they are. They are my politics. Yeah. Well, I would imagine that someone thinks of themselves a little more highly than they need to if they say, hey, hey, Mr. O'Hurley, just so you know, I used to like you. You don't you don't know me, by the way. Enjoy your lunch. Oh, it's a great try the French toast. You don't know me, but I used to like you and I don't anymore. Checkmate. All right. We have to go to uh, the web extended here. Uh, talk a little bit more generally. The, the show is A Man with Standards. Fine scenes at Vitello's Los Angeles. Do I have this right? It's uh, September 20th and 21st. Yep. Here we go. All right. Please, everyone, go support it right now. We're going to go to Web Center for a few minutes and talk about dogs. Here we go. Your photos or videos of you doing something awesome with your mug at S. Crowder to be featured as Mug Clubber of the Week. <laughs> Let's all go to the merch shop. Let's all go to the merch shop. Let's all go to the merch shop and buy ourselves some swag. Snazzy clothing and swag to buy at louderwithcrowdershop.com. Like this new signature baseball tee. Or these ranger panties. Or, of course, the holy grail itself. Mug Club. Let's all go to the merch 
good shop and buy ourselves some swag. The Second Amendment guarantees your right to be armed for your protection or the protection of your loved ones. I was able to stop him. Before sure. he was able to do any real sure. damage, you have the right to remain silent. What's going on? But you can Guilty. still face ridiculous civil liability with the defensive oh. use of your firearm. That's why you need Firearms Legal Protection. With our 24-7 emergency hotline and plans designed specifically for the firearms owner, Firearms Legal Protection is the best legal protection you can have for self-defense. Hey, it's time for that one live read of the week. I know it's obnoxious. Louderwithcredit.com slash mug club. I'm not only here to tell you about our wonderful hand-etched, painted, girthy mug, but a lot of you don't know that like 70% of our content is actually exclusively available on Mug Club, uh, and it's the only thing that allows us to continue content on YouTube. So do join up. $99 annually, $69 for students, veterans, active military. It's the only way to support the content and support Dave Rubin, who is now going to be available uh, for everyone at Mug Club. At The Blaze, you get the entire Blaze. Blaze TV catalog. Everyone there is really at the forefront. Uh, it's the premier network fighting for free speech and entertainment and just trying to create content that at least doesn't feel like a sucker punch when you go to bed at night like the late show. So louderwithcrowder.com slash mug club. It's the only way we keep the lights on. And that sounds more destitute, but it is. If you don't join mug club, we'll, we'll probably die. That was called the uh, Aquaman, because Aquaman, doesn't he ride sharks and fish? Sure. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he kept it. <laughs> I didn't finish it, I with choked a, on it. It's with a cat, so it's gay Aquaman. You mean Aquaman? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. The only thing, thank you, John O'Hurley. Yeah. Probably won't be back. JP. Uh, if you want to see an extended interview, we just talk about Seinfeld now. and dogs. Uh, we have that up, uh, of course, for people who are members of Mug Club and Dave Rubin and the whole Blaze catalog. Uh, you know, um... Yeah, the only thing gayer than the play cats is actual cats. I agree. Yeah, not a fan. Wholeheartedly. But we really, man, I will say, for a low budget, we really have been <laughs> making a go of it over there at the prop department. Um, <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, it was not a fan. What are you eating? Chicken, bro. Oh, okay, all right. Come on, man. Get him. <laughs> you are desperately seeking affirmation from the black community. Like, chicken and purple drink? Huh? Hey? And Trayvon, what, are, what a chip, right? No, yeah, no, no. Rap music? Um, okay. <laughs> uh, you know, in this segment, I, I often, you know, often talk about ways kind of to improve oneself. We talk about that quite a bit. Um, or paths or techniques. And invariably, it usually comes down to something like discipline, consistency, sometimes gratitude. But I, I wanted to talk about something today that isn't necessarily sexy. Um, it may seem a little bit more existential, more philosophical, but I think it's equally important and for many of the same reasons. So I don't know, did you guys know about the Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank? No. The accident that he had? No. Audio Wade, you knew I, that? I, I, I heard about, about that yeah. Kevin Hart had an accident. No, 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 that was just canceled in the Oscars. No, Kevin oh. O'Leary, uh, it was a crash, he crashed into another boat at night and Ooh. killed two people. Wow. Yeah, killed two people. Um, now I don't know all of the details, it's been hard to get the details, and this is kind of what, what sort of provided some inspiration for this segment because I was trying to get the straight answer on the story and I couldn't. Um, the initial story that I read said that their lights were off, right? It was at 11 at night. So what we do know is that it was at 11 o'clock at night, and the wife, who was, I think, driving the boat, uh, passed a sobriety test. There was no, there was no alcohol okay. on her system, from what I understand. Or certainly not above the legal limit. And then I read that, no, the lights were on of this other uh, boat. And it's a tragedy, of, of course. It's, it's really sad. And I'm sure that Kevin O'Leary is really torn up about it. Uh, then I read that Kevin O'Leary and his wife fled the scene of the crime. Okay, this was from one news source. Then I read another one that said the other people, the remaining people on the other boat, fled the scene of the crime. And then it turned out that both of them had technically fled the scene of the crime, but they both went to shore to immediately call for medical assistance, and there were phone records for that. And the reason I say this is because um, 
or, or the reason I talk about this, I bring it up, is because I think sometimes we're always looking for someone or something to blame. And sometimes there isn't somebody to blame. This is a really unfortunate, as best I can understand it. And I know some things might develop here, so don't hold me to this because I don't have the full story. None of us do yet. Um, it's an unfortunate accident. It's really unfortunate. C certainly some mistakes could have been made. Certainly there could have been some carelessness involved. We don't know. It doesn't seem that way right now. But no one's a villain here. No one's a bad guy here. And sometimes we're looking for answers. And I know this is really unpopular to say, we talked about this on Ash Wednesday this week, for those who are Mug Club members, uh, talking about the, the, the school shootings, the mass shootings, what we need to do with gun control. You know what? Um, there aren't any answers necessarily. Are there some solutions that maybe people can come up with? Are these conversations that we can have? Absolutely, to see how we can improve our current situation. I think we should always be striving towards self-improvement. But the idea that we have answers right now, that anyone has the immediate answer to solve the problem. I've heard people say, well, we have, we have more guns than anywhere else in this country, and that's why we have the suicide problem. Oh, okay, so do we have the top suicide rate in the world? No, we don't. We have more guns than, any other, we have more guns than Somalia per capita. Do we have worse violent crime than Somalia? No, we don't. So what's the solution? Taking the guns out of the hands of people who aren't committing suicide in record rates by global standards, or taking the guns out of the hands of law-abiding citizens who are not committing mass piracy as those in Somalia, there aren't necessarily any answers. And we're often looking for a villain, right? We're looking some, maybe someone who sold the guy the gun. Maybe we're looking for somebody, or Dan Crenshaw with AOC, who might have lent a friend a gun, right? How could you do this, AOC said. Do you know that, that your friends who are borrowing your gun are more than likely domestic abusers? That was an actual tweet. Think about that, more than likely, most likely domestic abusers. Where'd you get that, AOC? And then we want to talk about common ground, right? Well, hold on a second, you just assumed that this person's friends are all serial felons, violent felons who beat their wives. You're going to find common ground? After trying to vilify somebody, what you really mean by common ground is you actually want someone to agree with you. You just want to beat someone in a submission, whether it's Dave Chappelle, whether it's Dan Crenshaw, or myself. And so what happens is they try to vilify somebody because they always look for someone to blame. And we all do this, by the way. A lot of people act as though we're super separated from politics. We hear this a lot, like, ah, I just don't like the division in politics. You think that only happens in politics? Have you ever been to a Thanksgiving dinner? You can see, have you ever been to a wedding? You can see people line up on one side of the dance hall, and then people line up on the other side of the dance hall. This happened most recently at a wedding I went to, but that's, they were easily recognizable because they were Mennonites. But here's the thing. We're always looking. It's, it's a reflection of ourselves, politics. It's human nature. And all human beings are looking for a villain. They're looking for a boogeyman. They're looking for a scapegoat. Sometimes that's not the case, and it's an accident. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Because of that, because we understand that, because we understand the condition of human nature, Err on the side of forgiveness. No, it's not sex. Now, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian, so I believe in forgiveness. It's built, it's built into the faith, okay? Atheists out there, tantric yogis, stay with me anyway. Not only should you err on the side of forgiveness because it's right, because you'll probably make fewer mistakes, but it's also good for you. It's better for you. I can honestly say that, right, I can't think of a single person uh, th th throughout the entirety of my life who I wouldn't forgive right now. They asked for it. And I know, lest that sound like virtue signaling, let me tell you something that's a real flaw of mine. I find it really hard to forgive people who don't ask for it. People who've wronged me or people who've hurt me, if they were to apologize, the easiest thing for me to do, my instinct is to forgive. I'm typically a pretty empathetic person, but forgive someone who doesn't even want it, forgive someone who doesn't even think they were wrong, ooh, that's hard. So which action is the right thing to do when you're in this scenario. Let's say the Kevin O'Leary scenario to go back for, okay? Which action do you think would lead to more personal happiness, fulfillment, your own personal salvation then, uh, to spend the rest of their life looking for someone to blame in the face of a horrible tragedy? It's completely natural. And I'm not saying, by the way, that you just forgive and forget someone who actually beat your wife. Or, or, or raped your daughter. Of course not. There still needs to be justice. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about forgiveness in the sense that we go through with our in our day-to-day -day lives and the, the, the hate that we, and I don't mean hate in the anti-LGBTQ because you made an alphabet people joke, but actual hate that we harbor in our heart toward our fellow man. I mean, let me ask you this. Why should you be disciplined? We talk about that a lot. Why should you be principled? Why should you be consistent? 
in your endeavors. Why should you be grateful? Because it's the right thing to do. It will also improve your life immeasurably. Often they go hand in hand. Sometimes doing the right thing is really hard in the short term. In the long term, I tend to believe that it'll improve your life. The same can be said for having a forgiving spirit. Do this, think of someone right now. Think of someone who's pissed you off, who's wrong, you've been clinging to it. You've been grinding your teeth, you've been ruminating on it. Okay, I want you to take a second here, think of that person. You got, we all have them. Could even be your, 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 your pre-kindergarten teacher. My dad, bleep it, bleep that, because I don't want her watching this. But that's a story for another day. All right, have you got the person? Got them in mind? Now let it go. Forgive them, and, and this isn't some kind of a new age thing where I'm going to be playing binaural delta beats. Forgive them, move on with your life. Move on to the discipline, the consistency, and taking all of the other steps that we've talked about that we know and you know will lead you to a better life and a better self. But you can't do that. You can't take those steps to improving yourself unless you get past yourself. And that starts not with forgiving yourself, not with loving yourself as Calvin Klein wants you, to, wants you to believe and speaking your truth. No, no, you don't get past yourself and you don't improve yourself by just focusing on yourself. You get it through serving others. And you know how you, it starts with forgiving others. Try that. Tell me if it doesn't improve your life. I'll see you next week. Oh, that's right, next week, debates. See you then.